Hello and welcome back. In this week's video, we are going to be rebuilding some back patio steps. You can see the existing steps are starting to get worn and weathered. And you can see as I'm ripping up the boards, it's been trapping moisture in here and some of the wood is starting to rot. The materials we're gonna be using this time are a pressure treated lumber and composite decking. Now the pressure treated lumber, you wanna make sure you wear a face mask because the chemicals that they force in here are not something you wanna breathe in. You don't wanna get that in your system. It's not good for you. And another big thank you to Lowe's for partnering with me in this video and providing these tools. And this is basically all the tools you're gonna to need for this project. What we have is a Bosch circular saw, um, drill and an impact driver. Um, the difference between an impact driver and a drill is the drill uses drill bits. Impact driver is for fasteners and it helps. It's got kind of this hammering action. You can hear that when we're using it and it's driving in, you know, your deck screws or your lag bolts, things like that. So this bit is for the deck screws. And if I want to use a socket, the beauty about this design is the sockets snap right on with no adapters. So really handy tool. You're going to use this a lot. It's really convenient to have one of these and not use a drill for the fasteners. You might see me using this square and that's to help you get right angle cuts. Um, so it'll look nice and professional when you're done. So the big thing to consider is the height of each step. Measuring up from the cement, I have exactly 21 inches. That's really easy. I just divide that up and I need to build two seven inch steps and that will take me right into the house. So seven, 14, 21 gets me in and there's no variation in the height. It's a big difference if you're going from a six inch step and then you throw in a seven inch step, people are gonna trip. Look up your local building codes and it'll give you the height of the stairs, the tread depth, things like that. So to cut it at a perfect right angle, I'm holding the framing square firmly against the edge of the board and then running the circular saw right against it. Now I'm putting it all together with some specialty deck screws and the impact driver. So you'll notice I have these big flat surfaces here at the edges of the steps and that's because I'm gonna turn the last board 90 degrees and go right back against the house. And that just is much more visually appealing when you cover up the end grain of the boards. It's just a much better design. It is more work, but it's gonna look 10 times better. Now I'm gonna drill a hole through this part here because we have this kind of enclosed chamber. And I wanna make sure we got airflow. I also wanna make sure things like rodents don't make a home in here, so I'm going to staple on a metal mesh screen to keep them out. To give it the height I need, and also to keep it off the ground away from moisture, I've added a bit of scrap fascia material, and that's gonna allow for airflow as well. On the back of this first step, I have attached a two x four, and that is for this two x 10 to rest on, to give that the proper height. You just build two frames, the upper and lower, Put one on the other and that will give you the whole structure. Just attach the two together with some more deck screws. Now I'm attaching it to the house using some specialty lag screws. To keep some airflow in between the deck and the house, I'm adding a small shim. That just gives an air gap and allows it to dry out. I got a whole video on how to use this tool. It's gonna to force a nail into the concrete. If you're just building one step, maybe you just wanna use a little bit of construction adhesive in the corners, and that would be just fine. It's not gonna shift around once that dries. 
The third option would be to bolt it down using something like a hammer drill to put in an anchor. Next thing I'm going to attach an adhesive membrane and especially since I have such a wide flat surface right here, it's going to help the water that once it passes through the treads, it's going to hit the membrane, roll off to the ground. Next I'll attach the fascia. It's a good idea just to use a few screws in the beginning to secure it, keep it in place. And that way, if by the off chance you need to remove it, you only have to do a couple screws and take out a bunch of them. So put in enough just to hold it in place, keep it secure, keep it in position. And then at the end, you drive in all the final screws. Using the square, you can use this 45 degree angle to cut the corners. Most of the deck material you can buy now has a slot cut in the side and that's for hidden anchors to eliminate all the screw holes on top. And if I was building a large deck, I'd definitely use those. But with this project, I'm just gonna use a plug or maybe a filler material later and fill in the holes. Now when I'm putting in the boards, I wanna keep a little bit of a gap in and I want it to be uniform. So rather than measure every time, I just have a scrap piece and I can use that as a guide. Just insert it put in some screws and then move on to the next one. Again, I'm only using just enough screws to keep it in place. And at the end, I'll go and put in all the rest of the screws. And so that's it, some beautiful patio steps without too much work and a minimum amount of tools. You can definitely do something like this yourself. If you have any questions for me, if you'd like some more information on anything you saw me do, go ahead and leave your comments in the video description and I will do my best to answer. And again, another big thank you to Lowe's for supporting me. And if you wanna check out any of the products I used, go ahead and see the links in the description. It'll take you right there. I will see you guys next time and have an awesome day.